Documentation, arguably one of the most important things to understand to be an efficient developer. Now a lot of you have probably looked at documentation and come to a conclusion that you don't understand any of it. Feeling that it's too hard to understand, too complicated to get into, not understanding what to look for and how to use it. Well, it happens to be that the documentation in Flutter is really amazing. So we're going to use that to our advantage to learn and utilize documentations in our own project. Now the thing we're going to implement or create is rather simple, but we're going to take it at a documentation level first. And I will show you my walkthrough of how I actually implement things by using the documentation. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And you can find the full write-up at robertbrunager.com. And now when we have that out of the way, let's get into it. So here we have the typical standard Flutter application, which is just a counter application. If you have used Flutter before, you have either a love or hate relationship with this one, but we'll use it anyway. So what we are going to do is that we're actually going to remove this floating action button. And in its place, we're going to use a normal button instead to use as our own custom one. So we'll go ahead and delete that one. And below the text widgets, we're going to add our own widget. So most of the times we would just add our button here if we want to. So in this case, we'll just use a elevated button. And in here, we can do the implementations for both the on pressed as well as adding a child for the text. I have left the on pressed button empty just so we can ignore that part so we can go ahead and implement our own implementation. Now, let's say we want to do our own widget with this one. We can use the tooling to extract the widget. And this gives us some things out of the box, such as the constructor defining the key and then returning the elevated button in the build method. Now, in this example, I want to try to do it without the tooling. And the reason for this is rather simple. The tooling actually writes a lot of the code for us that we need to understand to be able to use the tooling effectively. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that widget and we're going to create our new and own widget. We're just going to call it something like custom button. Now if we go to the bottom and just create a stateless widget, we can just give it the name custom button. Now in this case, we don't want to use a container. We still want to use our elevated button. And we're just going to implement it as it was before. We're going to have a on pressed as well as a child for the text. So right now we have our button, but now for the time being, the button is actually utilizing the on pressed function that we have defined in the custom button. But in most cases, you actually want to be able to pass a on pressed function. So instead that will be executed when that button is pressed. Now let's imagine that we don't know actually how to approach that and do it. We can start off by actually looking at the implementation of the elevated button. Here we can see all of the code that the Flutter team and open source contributors has actually written for those buttons to be used. Now this defines a bunch of different variables, but the only one we actually care about is the functionality of how the on pressed is actually working. And if you get confused here that this extends a button style button, you can actually navigate to that one and see that this is just a simple stateful widget that they have reused for the buttons. Now you could do the implementation pretty much the same way that they did the elevated button. But for this demonstration, that's not really necessary. So now if we go back to our implementation, we will see that we just want to be able to pass a on pressed function to our button. Now going back to the elevated button, we can see that they have something called a void callback. And here we can see they're on pressed. Now looking deeper to see what this void callback actually is. We can see that this is just a type definition for a void function. So in a simple sense, just a method callback. Now, one common thing you will do in documentation is navigating to see where the different things are used. So we will just keep on navigating to on pressed and we can see that we have a final void callback on pressed variable. Now, what we are actually going to do is the exact same thing. So if we go ahead and navigate out of here and back to our custom button, we'll go and start by writing our final void callback variable. So to do this, you just define final void callback and you give it a name and we will do the same as they did with the normal elevator button and give it a name on pressed. Now we can actually see that this is red and that's because we have to have a constructor for this. So every time you're able to pass something to a widget, that's just because you have a constructor with defined variables. And now we have done the same 
but for our on-pressed void callback instead. Now if you are unsure what the key is in this scenario, I will link a video by the Flutter team explaining the key, as well as the official documentation for it. So just by utilizing the documentation, we can see now that our custom button is working very closely like it did in the elevated button scenario, that we are able to pass the on press callback. So now up here we could say something like print and then we could have we did the clicky thingy. And this is actually the first step you have to do to make your widgets reusable. Now we just have to do one more thing though, and that is actually using our on pressed void callback in our on pressed for the elevated button. So in essence what we are doing is just passing the function that we want to be using down to the elevated button. And now we've used that, we have made our button completely reusable with the on pressed functionality. We have a minor problem though, that is if we don't pass any on pressed callback to it, it doesn't warn us that anything is wrong here, but instead we will just notice that the button is disabled. And if we look at the elevated button, if we would remove the on pressed, we can see that we actually get a warning for it. So let us imagine once again that we don't know how to actually do that or fix that problem. So let us go to the elevated button once again, and we can see that they have this weird required keyword in front of the void callback. Now this required keyword is for null safety, and if you don't have access to that, you will probably instead use the at required sign. So in our example, as we are not adhering to null safety and a null safety feature, we're going to navigate up to the constructor for where we define the on pressed, and we can add the at required. Now by just this simple change, we can go up where we use the widget, and we can see that it now warns us, and if we remove the comments for the on pressed, we can see that the warning will be removed. If we look at the warning now, we can clearly see that the on pressed is required. Now to expand this, let's say we also want to be able to pass some kind of style to this elevated button, but we're not sure how to do that as well. So we'll go ahead and navigate to the elevate button again, and we can see that it requires some kind of button style. So of course, we can do the same by defining a new variable of the type button style, and we'll just call it style. Now the only thing left here to do is actually add it to the constructor, then we can add a comma to the end so we can format it. Now of course we have to use this variable, so let's define that for the style of the elevated button, and now we have added this style. So of course if we take a look at the application, and if we click the button, we can see that we print out the text. Now of course in the end we don't want it to just print out the text, we actually want it to increment the field. So if we go ahead and navigate up to our custom button again, we can see the on pressed, and here we used call our increment counter method. And of course this was already implemented for the actual template of the counter application. Now I don't want to leave out this amazing documentation that they have on the official documentation page on the Flutter site, as they have very nice structured content to read up on things you are more interested in. But sometimes you just want to understand and get a feel of what a field does in a specific widget or a class. So if you scroll down to the bottom left of this documentation site, you should see that they have a API reference. And if you navigate to that API reference, you'll get to a bit more daunting place, but it's actually simpler than you think. So other than that they have organized everything in the navigation bar to the left, you actually have access to a search functionality in the top right corner. And in our case, we can actually search for the elevated button class. Here you will be able to read up on everything that we could find in the SDK documentation that we looked at in the code. But this just gives us a web format to do this. And it's nice to get a habit of understanding these kind of documentations, as sometimes in other languages you won't be able to navigate and see the documentation right in the code. But they have an example, they have the constructor, as well as the properties. So let's say again we forgot about what void callback is. We can navigate to that and then remember that, okay, it's just a type definition for a void function. I want to give you another trick though. So let's say we search for snack bar and want to see the documentation of snack bar. But I also want to see if there are any updated information on this. And we can do this by prefixing master dash to the URL before the API. 
and we will actually get to the master channel documentation. And here we can even read about the scaffold messenger, which I have a video on. And you can find out that in the description or up in the card. But with this, you should have a basic understanding of how you can utilize documentation to your advantage. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, as well as checking out the website for the full write-up. Also, if you want to support me, you can find out my Patreon down in the description, where I have a bunch of different nice perks. And while we're at it, I'll bring up some other videos on the screen right now. And I will see you in the next one.